moderate rock. Ancient Light by S.M. Dotson. Episode 1. All gods lead to Rome. In modern society, we ask what our gods can do for us. We compare promised afterlives among our religions. We pray for help for both major and minor things. But in ancient times, there was more of a balance between what a god could do for a mortal and what a mortal could do for a god. We all know about the original idea of sacrifice. One might sacrifice a delicious calf or cow. The archaic Greeks would wrap the bones of the sacrifice with fat and give it to the gods, while the assembled people would eat the aforementioned delicious meat. Make no mistake, the significant ingredient to offer the god was the blood. The fat and bones were secondary. Even Homer spoke about the great power of blood to the dead. It gave the dead a taste of life again. Today, we talk of personal sacrifice, but the only thing we give to our gods are things like prayer, the singing of hymns, and saying thanks before a meal. I'm not going to go as far as to say a tithe goes to the benefit of a god, as much it is a donation made in a god's name. In several cases, an ancient Greek literary figure would promise to make regular sacrifices to a particular god for some sort of help or penance for a committed crime. Odysseus attempted to keep the god of the sun from killing his men for eating his prize cattle. Odysseus tempted Helios with regular sacrifices once he made it back to Ithaca. Sacrifice matters to a god. It makes one wonder what feeling or godlike endorphin was triggered by a mere sacrifice of livestock. Perhaps at the end of the day, all the gods added up the spilled blood, burnt offerings, small cakes, and the winding smoke and each god compared their individual influence upon man. If that is the case, the ancient mortals were merely appealing to the ego of a particular god. This is not too far-fetched, as the classical Greek gods are often portrayed like extremely powerful teenagers. I tend to think the blood appeals to the gods much like it appeals to the spirits of the dead, as portrayed in Homer's Odyssey. Blood is an invigorating life force to ghosts in Hades. Perhaps it has a similar effect on other luminous beings. I cover the topic of how the ancient Greeks spoke to the dead in episode 9 of Ancient Light. I have included the link in the text below the video. From my exposure to Greek and Latin classics, one thing is evident when it comes to the gods. You can actively set out to benefit a specific god by making a sacrifice in his or her name. My favorite example is the Roman Iwocatio. The word is related to the idea 
of recruitment. They use the word when referencing the recruitment of soldiers. They also use it when speaking about recruiting a god. A general of an army would stop the troops outside the walls of a hostile city, say somewhere in Gaul or Asia Minor perhaps, and he would address the main god of the people therein. The general would make a sacrifice and call out to the god of the city. But what does he say to the god? Modern ears, upon hearing this for the first time, might guess that the general will call out to the local god and denounce him or her, comparing the lesser known god to the mighty gods of Rome. This would not be the case. The Roman mentality was much different. Romans wanted to make their city the spiritual center of the conquered world by bringing all the gods to it. All the, gods, the, gods, the, gods. the Roman general would then proceed to call the local god by name. He told the god about Rome and how gods who move there experience much more glory and sacrificial gain than could be experienced in such a small city. The general then asks the god to abandon the temples of the hostile peoples and move to Rome. As a result, Rome was filled with temples, statues, and altars dedicated to foreign gods. The many gods of the world flowed into the Italian city. Of course, once an enemy was conquered, one might assume would be told where they can find their god. You know the phrase, all roads lead to Rome. It is true the roads are important, but what flows along those roads are much more than slaves, soldiers, and trade. The moral of the story, ask not what your gods can do for you, rather ask what you can do for your gods. Ask not what your gods can do for you, ask what you can do for your gods. Subscribe to Ancient Light. And like the video below or leave a comment. Each interaction helps us reach a, a larger audience. Thanks for tuning in.